हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू गेट शॉर्ट ट्रिक सीरीज दिस इज विनय एट द बैक विद वन मोर सब्जेक्ट ट्रिक एंड दिस टाइम दिस इज सिग्नल सिस्टम लेट मी टेल यू आई हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड फोर सब्जेक्ट नेटवर्क थियोरी एनालॉग इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स डिजिटल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड मैथमेटिक्स सो इफ यू वांट टू नो द ट्रिक ऑफ दिस सब्जेक्ट यू कैन फाइंड द प्लेलिस्ट लिंक अंडर द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ दिस वीडियो सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग आवर टाइम लेट्स स्टार्ट विद दिस वीडियो दिस वीडियो इज ऑल अबाउट द बेसिक्स ऑफ सिग्नल्स दिस वीडियो इज मैंडेटरी वीडियो दैट यू शुड वॉच बिफोर यू वॉच माई ट्रिक्स ओके सो लेट्स बिग इन द वेरी फर्स्ट सिग्नल दैट वी हैव इज डेल्टा टी डेल्टा टी इज बेसिकली द इम्पल्स फंक्शन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ दिस डेल्टा टी इज गिवन बाई दिस वे द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ डेल्टा टी एट टी इक्वल टू जीरो इज इनफाइनाइट एंड द एरिया ऑफ दिस सिग्नल इज फन ओके सो बेसिकली एज द टी टर्न टू जीरो द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ दिस सिग्नल टर्न टू इनफाइनाइट बट द एरिया ऑफ दिस सिग्नल इज वन ओके and you should note this thing that whenever you see the arrow in the continuous signal this signifies the area okay so basically this one signifies that the area of this signal is one okay so this was all about the delta t in continuous domain now let's see the delta n in discrete domain okay so the definition of delta n is given by this way delta n has a magnitude of 1 at n equals to 0 and it is zero otherwise okay and the area is again one so here you can see the magnitude itself is one at t equals to 0 okay so here there is no complexity but in the continuous domain you can see that the area was one but the magnitude was tending towards infinite as the t tends to 0 okay so this is the difference that you should know about delta t and delta n okay now let's see unit step function the definition of ut is given by this way ut is equals to 1 For t greater than zero and it is equals to zero for t less than zero. So here you can see this. The representation of u t is shown here. Okay, it is basically equals to one for t greater than zero and less than zero. It is zero. Okay, for u of minus t, it is just ulta. It will be one for t less than zero and it will be zero for t greater than zero. Okay, now let's say if someone ask you that what is u t plus u of minus t. So what you will do? You will add this signal and this signal and you will get this signal. Okay, so this is your u t and this is your u of minus t. If you carefully observe this signal, this signal is basically the signal with the magnitude of one over minus infinity to infinity. Okay, so whenever you get u of t plus u of minus t, it is basically one signal with the magnitude of 1 over minus infinity to infinity okay now let's see for u of n u of n is 1 for n greater than or equals to 0 and it is 0 for otherwise okay you should note the difference in ut and un here in ut it was 1 for t greater than 0 only it was not equals to 1 for t equals to 0 but here in u of n it is 1 for n equals to 0 also okay if you want to know that t equals to zero value you have to use the gibbs phenomena gibbs phenomena says that if you want to know the value at the transition point so you should take the t equals to a minus value and t equals to a plus value and get the average okay so if you want to know at t equals to zero value it will be t equals to zero minus magnitude plus t equals to zero plus magnitude upon 2 okay so here it will be 0 plus 1 by 2 basically it is 1 by 2 at t equals to 0 by gibbs phenomena okay so for continuous domain it is 1 by 2 at t equals to 0 but in discrete domain it is equals to 1 at n equals to 0 itself okay so the representation of this signal is given by this way okay so this is 1 1 1, 1 at n equals to 0 1 2 3 and so on okay now let's see for u of minus n at for for u of minus n it is just ulta u of minus n says that it is equals to 1 for n less than equals to 0 again you should note this difference it is equals to 1 for n equals to 0 also okay but it was not same for u of minus t okay so it is 1 at n equals to 0 it is 1 for n equals to minus 1 and so on okay now let's say if someone ask you what is u of n plus u of minus n so what you will do you will add this and you will get this type of signal okay so this is your u of minus n and this is your u of n okay so if you carefully observe this at n equals to 0 it is 1 plus 1 one of u of minus n one of u of n and which is equals to 2 at n equals to 0 okay now let's say if you have to represent this signal mathematically so how you are going to write this If you observe this signal carefully, it is one from minus infinity to infinity. Just at n equals to zero, it is one plus one. Okay, so you have one signal. I know you know that one signal is there which gives at n equals to zero magnitude one and which is del n. Okay, so basically this signal you can write this in this way that this signal is nothing but one which is from minus n equals to infinity to n equals to infinity plus del n. Okay. 
So del of n only gives the magnitude of 1 at n equals to 0 which will be added by 1 at n equals to 0 to get your 2 okay and this will conclude this signal okay so this is basically u of n plus u of minus n is 1 plus del n okay now let's move on this time we have sigma of t the definition of sigma of t is this sigma of t is 1 for t greater than 0 it is equals to minus 1 for t less than 0 for t equals to 0 again you will use the gibbs phenomena which is minus 1 plus 1 upon 2 which is minus 1 plus 1 is 0 by 2 is 0 okay so at t equals to 0 it is 0 by gibbs phenomena okay now let's say if you want to get this signal in terms of u t so what you will do you already know that u of t has only this section right okay so you have to get rid of this signal okay so what you are going to do is you are going to add one to this signal so what you will get you will get zero here and you will get this magnitude to two okay so basically this is what you will get if you add one plus signum t you will get zero for minus infinity to zero and from zero to infinity you will get the magnitude of two okay so now you have to get rid of this two so what you will do you will just divide this signal by two okay and so this is what your final result is one plus signum t by two is equals to u of t so easy right so if you want to become a master of signal system you should be able to play with these signals now let's see the signum signal in discrete domain okay signum of n the definition of signum of n is given by this way okay it is zero for n equals to zero it is plus one for n greater than zero and it is minus one for n less than zero okay so this is what your signum signal looks like okay it is zero for n equals to zero it is one for n equals to one two three and so on it is minus one for n equals to minus one two three and so on okay now again if you want to get the signum of n in terms of u n what you are going to do you are basically going to add the signal of one to this signal so you will get zero 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 here you will get one here you will get one plus one here you will get one plus one so basically you will get this signal okay at n equals to zero it is one for n equals to one it is two for n equals to 2 it is 2 okay so if you want to write signal mathematically what you will do it is basically 1 plus signum of n is equals to del of n plus 2u of n right if you want only u of n here you can shift this del of n here and divide by 2 okay so it will be 1 plus signum of n minus del of n by 2 is equals to u of n okay easy right now we have e of t exponential signal we have which is e of t okay e of t is 1 at t equals to 0 and it start from 0 at t equals to infinite and it reaches to infinite as the t tends to infinite okay similarly for e raised to minus t it is just ulta it is 0 at t equals to infinite and it is infinite as t tends to minus infinite okay and the value at t equals to 0 is 1 again okay you can see e raised to 0 is always 1 of any signal right so by this that magnitude becomes 1 okay now let's come to e raised to minus mod of t okay before that you should know about this mod function okay so let's start with t t function is always follows the time okay so it will be 0 at t equals to 0 it will be 1 at t equals to 1 it will be minus 1 at t equals to minus 1 and so on okay and for minus t it is just rule type it will be 0 at t equals to 0 it will be 1 at t equals to minus 1 it will be minus 1 at t equals to 1 okay it is just ulta of this t okay now coming to this mod of t the representation of mod of t is given by this way mod of t is equals to t for t greater than 0 and it is minus t for t less than 0 okay if you don't understand think in this way right mod function always gives positive value right so if you consider that t equals to phi it will be phi right and for t less than 0 let's say let's say at t equals to minus phi it will be minus of minus phi okay so minus of minus 5 is nothing but phi so mod function always gives positive value by this way this representation came okay that this mod of t has t for t greater than 0 and it has minus t for t less than 0 okay so remember in this way okay so for t greater than 0 it has the signal of t and for t greater less than 0 it has the signal of minus t okay so this is how this mod t works okay now coming to this e raised to minus of mod t okay so that the representation will be somewhat like this e raised to minus t for t greater than 0 and e raised to minus of minus t which will be e raised to t for t less than 0 okay so this is e raised to t for t less than 0 and e raised to minus t for t greater than 0 okay cool right now let's move on to the 
another signal okay now this time we have a rectangle function okay rectangle function which is a representation in this way that a rect t by t okay so this signifies a magnitude and this signifies the width okay total width so the total width is t by 2 minus of minus t by 2 is t right so this is your width and this is your magnitude so this is how your rectangular function works now we have triangular function a tri t by t okay now here this signifies the magnitude and this signifies the half width okay this half width note this difference in rectangle and triangular this is the complete width this is the half width this is the magnitude this is the magnitude okay so this is how your triangular function will looks like this is your magnitude this is your half width t and this is minus t okay now let's move on now we have one upon t as we have seen this t function it follows as per the time which is it equals to zero it is magnitude is zero at t equals to one it is one but here one by t it is just ulta at t equals to zero it will be infinite at t equals to one it will be one upon one at t equals to two it will be one by two and so on and as the t tends to infinite it will reach us to zero okay now let's move on to the sign signal sinusoidal signal looks like something like this okay it is somewhat like this okay this is your sinusoidal signal okay now let's say someone asks you to divide this sinusoidal signal by this t okay so you will get this thing sin t by t and i know that you remember that sin t by t is basically a sample function okay so if you divide your sinusoidal signal by t you will get this sample function okay so for at t equals to 0 it will be sin 0 by 0 sin 0 is 0 t equals to 0 is 0 okay so it will be 0 by 0 so if you use the l hospital root derivative of sin t is cos t derivative of t is 1 so cos t at t equals to 0 is 1 and here in denominator it is also 1 okay so the value of this signal at t equals to 0 is 1 okay so here this is what your signal looks like at t equals to 0 it is 1 and at rest of the thing it is basically the sinusoidal signal which is getting multiplied by this 1 by t okay so this is how if you divide the sinusoidal signal by t you will get this type of signal okay this type of signal is called as sample t okay and this signal is 0 at t equals to pi t equals to minus pi t equals to 2 pi and t equals to minus 2 pi as you can see that sinusoidal signal is always zero for t equals to n pi okay but remember this thing it is not zero at t equals to zero pi it is equals to one at t equals to zero okay so note this thing now let's say if you have scaled this signal basically you have now sample of pi t okay so you will replace this t with pi t okay so it will be sine of pi t by pi t okay and i know that you remember that this signal which is sine pi t upon pi t is sync function okay sync function is actually made up of sample function with the scaled time of this pi okay so sine pi t by pi t is sync function and the representation of the signal is this way okay this is 1 at t equals to 0 but it is 0 at t equals to 1 2 minus 1 minus 2 okay here it was 0 at t equals to pi here it is 0 at t equals to 1 why because you have scaled the time by pi t okay so here it will be pi divided by pi so this way you get this instant as 1 okay now let's see the basic conversion formula for sinusoidal to sample sample to sinusoidal okay let's say you want to convert the sample function into sync function so you are going to do the time scaling here so the formula for that is sample of at is equal to sync of at by pi okay if you don't know this formula you can always remember by this way sample of pi t is equal to sync pi t by pi this pi pi got cancelled and you get this sync function okay you know that this sync function is basically sample of pi t okay so always try to figure out this sample function in terms of sync function then you can derive this formula very easily okay sample of at is basically sync of at by pi okay so this was the basic that you should know before you watch my tricks okay let me conclude this video we started with delta function then we moved to unit step function we have seen that ut plus u of minus t what the signal forms then we have seen the same thing for u of n then we move to signum function then we saw how to get the ut from signum function similarly for signum or uh, signum function in discrete domain then we saw for exponential function we have seen how to get this e raised to minus of mod t and then we saw this rectangle triangle function then we moved to this one by t and at the end we concluded with sample and sync function and 
saw the conversion formula for the same okay so that's it from my side thank you guys